And it's time now for our community update this morning. And joining us in studio this morning is Appleton Police Chief Todd Thomas. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, the department just launched a new program called Project Safe Response. Tell us about it. Sure. This is a partnership between uh, the Fox Valley Memory Project, the Aging Disability Resource Center, and the Appleton Police Department. Um, it's a way for us to have information from the community uh, if they have a, a family member who maybe has a dementia um, or is on, on the autism scale or some other cognitive impairment. Uh, they can complete a packet uh, with us uh, that's confidential that will allow us to have information that if we have to respond and help out the family member or the person that has the, the impairment, uh, that we can do it safely and in a way that, that helps them the, the most. So is it like medical information and everything right. like that? Yeah, it's a packet that they can complete. Um, and we share it with the memory project um, and it, it tells us what what triggers the person so that we don't do those things but also like positive interactions what kind of things will will de-escalate them if they're upset or angry um, or if they're a wanderer um, you know about 15 percent of our population over the age of 71 has some form of dementia uh, about one percent of our population uh, is on the autism spectrum mm -hmm. so we come into contact with these people quite quite frequently um, so it's good for us to know what things we should do and what things, things we shouldn't be doing when we interact with them. Nice. And now Sergeant Carrie Peters, who is one of WFRB's yes. remarkable women of 2021, was also a leader in developing this. Yes, yeah, she, she spearheaded this. She's got a passion for, for helping people that have uh, dementia and autism and a lot of other things. Uh, works with a refugee program, but she was also uh, just recently named uh, one of the officers of the year by the Wisconsin Association of Police, so that was pretty exciting for her. Now, why was this program needed and how does someone sign up? Like I mentioned, we've got a lot of people in our community uh, that, that fall in the autism spectrum or have dementia, it's some form of dementia. We know that age group is growing, uh, the baby boomers. Um, we're coming in contact with them pretty frequently. Even, even the silver alerts that you see go out now, it's more frequent than what it's been in the past. So it's important that we know how to approach these people and how to deal with uh, them in a safe way and, and a positive way. Um, we see tragedies happen across the country. Yeah. We just don't want that happening in our city. And so now how does someone sign up? Uh, go online. Uh, it's on our website. Uh, you can either contact Carrie Peters directly or send her an email. She'll, she'll set up a meeting with you and the, and the family to fill out the packet. Okay, now switching gears, you made an arrest on the West College Avenue shooting in February, Jonathan Yang. What happened that night, and do you believe he's a shooter? Yes, absolutely. Uh, that's what all the information has led us to believe. Um, that was an incident. Uh, it originated at Coors Lounge. Uh, it's a small uh, tavern that's in a strip mall there. Uh, again, still trying to learn what this, the start of the disturbance was or what, what precipitated the shooting. Um, a large group of people gathered for a St. Valentine's Day gathering. Uh, we had people from outside of the area, outside of the state, that were attending. Something happened where there was a, con a conflict uh, that led out into the parking lot. Um, we have video evidence. We've got statements. Uh, we're still investigating, and it's ongoing. Um, but we were able to work with St. Paul Police to arrest him and, and bring him back to Appleton. Are you still looking for more people to We arrest? are still working the case. Uh, it continues uh, if we are able to prove that we had people that either aided and assisted him either before the shooting or after the shooting, we'll definitely hold them accountable too. Now, retention, recruitment, and hiring, something that a lot of departments are struggling with. How is your department handling it? Uh, we're doing really well. Um, we're almost fully staffed. Uh, we just hired uh, an, an officer this Monday, um, an officer that comes to us with 12 years of experience. Um, uh, Chuck Allen, and then we are hiring another officer next Monday who comes us, uh, to us from the Phoenix area who's been an officer for six years, Mike Turner. He's coming back here. He used to play for the Blizzard. If you're a Blizzard fan, oh. you <laughs> might recognize the name. Nice. Um, but we're doing really well with our hiring. Um, we, uh, we're, we've been lucky. Uh, we've got uh, a good group of people that we're doing backgrounds on now. So, But we're always hiring. Our, our hiring process is mm -hmm. constantly open, and that kind of helps us stay ahead of the curve. All right. Thank you so much for joining yes, us. Steve. Thank we you. appreciate it. In Appleton, it's a beautiful morning. Look at the sunshine. It's 12 degrees there. It feels like zero with the wind chill, and today it's going to be chilly. A little early sunshine, more clouds rolling in, mid 20s. We're going to talk about how long this cold spell lasts for us coming up right after this.